Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is K inverse pairs array. So in this question, we're given an array called nums and by definition, an inverse pair is a pair of integers ij where i is less than j and j is less than the length of the array. So i should be before j and the element present at i should be greater than the element present at j. So it should be a decreasing pair that is for example, 3 comma 2 is an inverse pair because 3 is greater than 2. So in the input, we are given two integers n and k and the task is to return the different arrays consisting of the numbers 1 through n such that there are exactly k inverse pairs. And since the answer can be huge, we have to return it with modulo 10 power 9 plus 7. So we have to return the different number of pairs consisting of the numbers 1 through n by applying modulo to it as the final output. Now let's take these two examples and see how we can solve this question. So in example 1, n is equal to 3 and k is equal to 0. So this is the range given to us 1 through n. So the number should be between 1 through n which is 1 comma 2 comma 3. So 1 comma 2 comma 3 is the array which has 0 inverse pairs because every pair inside this 1 comma 2 and 1 comma 3 and 2 comma 3. So these three pairs are not inverse and k is equal to 0. So this is one brute force that we find all the pairs and check if there are inverse and how many are equal to k will keep a count and return it as the output and that time complexity is going to be very huge so the better approach is that you have to apply recursion so how do you come to that conclusion let's see let's take an example so let's take an array where n is equal to 4 and the elements in the inside the array and now let's keep k is equal to 0 and try for all other uh, values of k so let's start with k is equal to 0 when k is equal to 0 the answer is going to be 1 because this is one inverse pair. So when k is equal to 0, we have our answer as 1. Now let's try for k is equal to 1. So now we can see we can apply recursion. So for example, let us take the elements from n is equal to 1 to n minus 1. So those will be 1, 2, 3. So think we have this array and we have to add 4 into this array. And now in which position you can add this 4 so that there will be one inverse pair. Let's see what are the possibilities you can add 4. You can add 4 at the end. So this will become 1, 2, 3, 4. And how many number of inverse pairs are there? And there are 0 inverse pairs, which is same as when k is equal to 0. So this is one observation that if you add the nth number at the end, it will be at the same value when k is equal to k minus 1. So here k is equal to 1. So it will have the same number of inverse pairs when k is equal to 0 that is its previous iteration. Now let's try to add k one position from the right. So this is 1, 2, 4, 3 and how many inverse pairs are there? There is one inverse pair and which is that inverse pair? It is this. 4 is greater than 3 so we have one inverse pair. Now if we add 4, two positions from the right it will become 1, 4, 2, 3 and the number of inverse pairs are 2. And which are those two inverse pairs? It is 4, 2, 4 is greater than 2 and it is 4, 3, 4 is greater than 3. And last position where you can add is in the beginning. So this will become 4, 1, 2, 3. And how many inverse pairs are there? There are three inverse pairs. So the first inverse pair is 4 is greater than 1. Second is this, 4 is greater than 2. The third inverse pair is 4 is greater than 3. So 4, 1, 4, 2 and 4, 3 are the three inverse pairs. So you can observe that if we have the values from n is equal to 1 through n minus 1 and positions you can add this nth number 4 is k positions from the right. So here you can see we added at last position, last minus 1, last minus 2, last minus 3. So these are going to be the limits of the recursive calls and we are computing the value from the previous values we have. So, so 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 the values you can calculate from 1 comma 2 comma 3 and this will be calculated from 1 comma 2 and this will be calculated from 1. So first we are going to take a look at the top down approach and second we are going to look at the bottom up approach. So this will make things very clear. Make sure you watch this video till the end because I am going to show you the dry run and also the code and code for both these will be very similar. Here we are going to use a 2D array and here we are going to implement recursion plus memoization. Now let's take a look at approach 1. Now coming to the function, this is the function given to us. These are the two integers n and k. Now we have to determine the exit condition for every recursive call because this is going to be the recursive call itself. So if n is equal to 0, that means there are 0 numbers 
and if n is equal to 0 there will be 0 inverse pairs so we can directly return 0 as the output so if n is equal to 0 then we have to return 0 now what happens if k is equal to 0 here in this case k is equal to 0 the output will be 1 which is the sorted pair 1 2 3 is the sorted pairs which has 0 inverse pairs if k is equal to 5 and n is equal to 0 even then you will have only 1 as the output because 1 2 3 4 5 will be the sorted array which has 0 inverse pairs so if k is equal to 0 we can return 1 now let's take a variable i'm going to name it inverse pairs which is initially 0 now we keep adding the total number of inverse pairs for every recursive call the inverse pairs will keep on incrementing and now i'm going to call this recursive function and inside every recursive function there will be n minus 1 because we are decrementing the range because we have to check for its previous condition like i mentioned here so if this is n is equal to 4 we check for n is equal to 3 value so i'm checking n equal to 3 and k will be decremented by i where i will be the iterations of the range so i will keep track of how many positions we can move the new number for example we want to add 5 into this we can add at the end we can add here we can add here we can add here and we can add here so to get this range we are going to use a for loop i which will have the range n minus 1 so n minus 1 positions so 5 minus 1 positions right so 1 2 3 4 so max 4 positions to the left you can move and for example if we are here in this recursive call you, you can't go n minus 1 positions to the left max you can go is still here only so you are keeping track of that by using the variable k min among both these will be the range of i so this condition will be very clear in bottom up approach so make sure you watch this video till the end so this recursive call i'm going to place it inside a for loop so for int i is equal to 0 until and now i is less than or equal to the minimum range the minimum range is here n minus 1 or k whatever is minimum because it will take k if it is in the beginning and it can't move n minus 1 steps and if it is in the end k will be very less to move and it will take n minus 1 as the max range it can move to its left that is the new number can be added at n minus 1 place from the right so here it is mat.min of k or n minus 1 and i plus plus and now we have to apply mod right so let us define the variable mod and initialize 10 power 9 plus 7 to it and this statement can be written as inverse pairs is equal to inverse pairs plus the recursive call. So to this we can add mod and store it inside inverse pairs which will be our output. Now let's re return inverse pairs. And now this is the recursive approach which has lot of repeated calculations. Because for example here n is equal to max 1000. So for n is equal to 1000 there will be lot of recursive calls. And this approach will give time limit exceeder error because we didn't store the previous recursive calls by implementing memoization so let's see if this is giving tle so the sample test cases are being accepted but the larger test cases is going to give tle only 35 out of 80 test cases have been passed now let's try to implement memoization and to implement memoization you are going to check what are the changing variables inside the recursive call both the parameters are changing inside every recursive call so we need to use a 2d array let me declare the 2d array n is going to be of the size 1000 and k is also going to be of the size 1000 so let's use an integer array of size 1001. I'm going to name it memo. And it will be of the size 1001. And usually how do you implement memoization? You fill all the values with minus 1, right? But here we are not using a helper function. This main function is going to act as the recursive function. If we fill this memo array with minus 1 here, each time the recursive call, the values are going to be resetted to minus 1. So that is why we need to check in some way how we can implement minus 1 as a sign to indicate that we didn't calculate the value so a simple trick is that instead of using int we have to use integer which is the integer class and inside this integer class these values are going to be stored as objects and objects you can directly check by using the null operator initially everything will be null inside this array so there is no need to fill the array separately with minus ones so here before implementing the recursive call I'm going to check if this memo value is not equal to null. If it is not equal to null, it means we already calculated that value and we can return it directly. So if memo of n and k, which is the integer value, is not equal to null, then we can return memo of n and k as the output. 
because the value is already stored. If this is equal to null, that means we haven't calculated that value. Here before returning it for every recursive call, I'm going to store it inside that memo array so that we can use it for next calculations. So this statement can be written as, so you can also store this here separately and directly return inverse pairs as the output. This also works, but this is a good practice to reduce the lines of code. And here I forgot to apply mod. And now let's try to run the code. The sample test case are being accepted. Let's submit the code. And our solution has been accepted. So the time complexity of this approach is big O of n into k and minimum of n into k. n into k to iterate through the memo array here and minimum of n into k is for every iteration for the recursive call to check how much we have to go back. And the space complexity is big O of n into k because we're using a n into k size memo array to store our recursive calls output by implementing memoization. Now let's take a look at the bottom up approach where we are going to use a 2D DP array to compute our output. And the code for that is going to be similar to this. So I'll show you that after we implement the tabler approach. So the DP approach is going to be very similar to this. Just understand this process. So how we are adding a new number at the end or one step here or one step here or one step here. And you will understand the process very clearly. So in this approach, we're going to use a 2D DP array where n is going to be 4 and k is going to be 5. And we're going to use a DP array of size n plus 1 and k plus 1. Now let's start filling the values. If n is equal to 0 and k is equal to 0. Since there are no numbers, you can't find any pairs. So this would be 0. So wherever there is 0 n, so all those values is going to be 0 irrespective of whatever value k is going to be. k can be from 0 through 5. But if n is 0, the values are also going to be 0 because there won't be any elements inside the array. Now let's start for n is equal to 1 and k is equal to 0. So it means there is one element inside the array and that element is going to be 1 because the range is from 1 through n. And n is 1, 1 to 1 the value is going to be 1. If k is equal to 0, that is going to be 1 pair. So this is going to be 1 and that array element is going to be 1. And now in the next iteration, and in the next iteration, n is going to be 1 and k is going to be 1. So well, let's take that one element and that one element can't have one inverse pair because that is the only element. So this is going to be 0. And this 0 is coming from this top value because we can't add any new number at the end. So that is going to be 0. And similarly, if n is equal to 2 also, you can't shift that value. So the rest of the values is also going to be zeros for n is equal to 3, 4 and 5. Now let's go n is equal to 2. Now if n is equal to 2 and k is equal to 0, what are the two elements? 1 comma 2 and there are 0 inverse pairs. So this is going to be 1 and let me write that pair here. That pair is 1 comma 2. Now n is equal to 2 and k is equal to 1. So this represents you can't add anything to the end. In the previous iteration, i is equal to 1 and if you add 2 to it in the end, it will become 1 comma 2 and k is equal to 0 in this case because if you add it to the end, there, ha there won't be any inverse pairs. There is one more option. You can't add it to the end, but you can add it here. If you add it here, that will become 2 comma 1 and this has one inverse pair because 2 is greater than 1 and that is the one inverse pair. So here we are taking its previous value and adding 2 at the beginning. So that is 1. So if n is equal to 2 and k is equal to 2 now. So it will take the previous value. You can't add it to the end. You can't add it to the end. If you add it to the end, it was 1 comma 2 and it is already present here. You can't add it one step forward. It will become 2 comma 1 and it is already present here. So you added values in the end and you added value in the beginning. Only when 1 was there, you add it in the end and you tried add it in the beginning. And you can't add any more to the left because you already reached the limit. So you only have to check for previous two values here. And what is the sum of them? It is going to be 0 plus 0. So this is also going to be 0. And again in the next case, k is equal to 3. And you need 3 pairs. So 1 comma 2 are the two numbers. So you check the previous two numbers. Because it can go max k shifts in the left. So you check the sum of these two. The sum of these two is 0. And in the next iteration, k is equal to 4, it will check these two, the sum is equal to 0, so it is 0. Next, k is equal to 5, it will check the previous two insertion places, the sum, and it is sum is equal to 0. And now in the next iteration, n is equal to 3, 
and k is equal to zero. So when k is equal to zero, what is the sorted pair? So the sorted pair will be the answer one two three, and there are zero inverted pairs. So one will be the output, so which is coming from the top value here, and that pair is let me write it here one two three. And now when k is equal to one, so we have to check previous value. So initially there is one two, and you add in the end. So if you add in the end, you have to take the previous value. So the previous value had two comma one, and if you add three to the end, it will become and it has one inverted pair. So two one three is one purple answer, and you add three in between. So you take one and you add here, and this is two right. So if you add here, it will become three. So the value is one three two, and it also has one inverted pair. And there is no other value in the left here, so you end the iteration. So here you are taking the value min of k or i minus one. And I will start from zero until it is equal to this. So here in this case, zero and k is equal to one or i is equal to two minus one one. It will range from zero and one. So it will take two iterations. First iteration it will take this. Second iteration it will take this and it will come to an end. So this value is one plus one. That is the sum of these two. So the sum is two. And now for this it will take the previous three values. So previous three values sum. So which is one plus one two, and what are the two pairs? And here, you have to add it in the end, right? But there's nothing to be added. So here you add it in the between, so it will become two three one. And here you add it in the beginning, and it will become three one two. So two three one. So in these two pairs, and k is equal to two. And the two inverse pairs are three one and two one. So two comma one is one in inverse pair, and three comma one is one inverse. And here three comma one is one invert inverse pair, and three comma two is one inverse pair. So those are the two inverse pairs. And now in the next iteration, it will check these three values because we are checking the minimum of k or the n minus one, and n minus i minus one is three minus one, so two. So it will range from zero, one, and two. So these three iterations will be taken from the values these three. So the sum of these three are one plus zero plus zero, and it is equal to one. So here you have to add it in there. Nothing to add. Add in the between. Nothing to add. And here you can add it in the beginning. So this pair is three, two, one. And now you take the sum of previous three values. It is zero. And here you take sum of these three values. It is zero. Now n is equal to four, and k is equal to zero. So the values are going to be one, two, three, four. And this value one we are getting from top. Because we are adding four in the end, and there is nothing more to be added here, because we are taking k as the previous value and k is equal to zero, so there will be only I will iterate from zero until zero. So let me write that that value is one, two, three, four, and here it has to take at least four values in the beginning, but here there is only two values, so it will take minimum of this k, so k is equal to one. So zero and one will be the two iterations for i. So sum of that two is one plus two is three. So the three values are you add three in the end here. You add the fourth number four. You add the current number n in the end for these two possibilities one two one three four. And here if you add, it will become one three two four. And now here you have to add in between two and three because one step left. So one two four three. So these are the three possibilities, and now in the previous iteration again it has to take four values, but this value is not present, so it will take minimum, and I will iterate from zero, one, two, so it will take these three values. So let's try to add four in the end here. I'll write it here, so it will become two, three, one, four, and if you add four in the end, it will become three, one, two, four, and now you add four here, so it will become two, one, four, three, and here it will become. One, three, four, two, and here you add two steps to the left, so it will become one, four, two, three. So in all of these, k is equal to two, and there are two inverted pairs. So if you take any one of them, let's take this. The first inverted pair is here, and second inverted pair is here. In this first inverted pair is second inverted pair is three and one. So there are total one plus two plus two possibilities, and that is five. And now k is equal to three. So it will take these previous four values which are present. So let's try to add four in the end. So the pairs will become three, two, one, four. Add four one step to the left. So this will become two, three, four, one. And here it will become three, one, four, two. 
here add two steps from the right so it will become 2 4 1 3 and here it will become 1 4 3 2 and add two steps from the right so it will become 1 4 2 3 so the total pairs are 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 so total 6 and now k is equal to 4 so it will take these four values so the answer is 5 so what are the 5 pairs from the top there is nothing so you can't add in the end here you add one step from the right so this will become 3 2 4 1 and here two steps from the right it will become 2 4 3 1 again two steps from the right it will become 3 4 1 2 three steps from the right so here it will become 4 2 1 3 and two steps from the right it will become 4 1 3 2 and these are the five values now n is equal to 5 and k is equal n is equal to 4 and k is equal to 5 that is the last value and you have to take the previous four values and here the iterations are going to be four times 0 1 2 3 4 and these are the four values the sum is 2 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 so it is 3 and what are the three values and now you can't have anything coming from the top so you can't add in the end so if you take 1 2 3 4 so you have 1 2 3 here you can't add in the end so this is coming from 0 so you can't add one step to the left so 1 2 you can't add and you have can add here and that value is coming from here so this will become 3 4 2 1 and you have two values coming from here and you have can add in the beginning so it will become 4 2 3 1 and it will become 4 3 1 2 and the total number of pairs are 2 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 which is 3 and finally you return the value dp of n comma k which is present at the bottom right because you have to find the answer so this will be the output so now let's implement the same steps inside code i'll show you step by step so this is the top down approach right let, now let us do the bottom up approach so in the bottom up approach first like i said we have to define the 2d array i'm going to name it dp and it will be of the size n plus 1 rows because we have to consider 0th row and k plus 1 columns now let's iterate through the dp array and the value is starting from 1 through n right so i will start from 1 and i will be less than or equal to n and i plus plus so we are going to access and with that i minus 1 throw you can fill the 0 throw because you start from 1 1 minus 1 will be 0 and you can fill the 0 throw now we have to iterate through the columns so i use a pointer j which will start from 0 and this will have limit of k right so here you can see so this is i and j is this and if you observe the jth column if j is equal to 0 the 0th column except the 0th row everything is 1 so if j is equal to 0 we can directly fill it as 1 so the 0th column j is always going to be 1 which is the sorted array so dp of i and j is going to be 1 so here as you can see 1 is sorted 1 2 is sorted 1 2 3 is sorted 1 2 3 4 is sorted so all of these values are going to be 1 and in the else block it means for other columns you are going to fill dp of ij and you need to get the limits right so for that i'm going to use a for loop where i will start from zero so i'm going to name this loop as p it will start from zero and p is less than or equal to mat dot min of we have to get the range right so mat dot min of the range so what is the range it will be k and k is accessed by the jth column so it will be min of j or i minus one which is the number i minus 1 so for example if we are at 4 i minus 1 will be the this one if we are at 3 i minus 1 will be the this one so we are going to get the range so for example if you want to fill this number you are taking the previous rows value so it will be i minus 1 so here it will pick i minus 1 but here for example if you want to fill this value you can't take the previous three values so it will take case value case value is equal to j loop and this is the i loop so it will take the min among both these so that is why we are taking j or i minus 1 and now if that is the case we have to add it to the current value dp of ij plus dp of i minus 1 that is the previous row so i minus 1 for example if you want to fill this you are checking the previous rows values this or this or this or this so those are present at i minus 1 right because we are at fourth row and we want to check third row's values so we are have, we are checking the previous row's values 
and column will depend on p so for this row column will depend on the j row and this limit so column will depend on this limit or the j column so j minus p will be the notation of which row you want to select so j is the column number and p is which number among these four you are picking so this will be j minus p and remember before storing into the dp array we have to apply mod so i declare mod variable here which is having 10 power 9 plus 7 and we can apply here to the whole and this for loop will happen for all the elements inside the dp array and you have the values stored inside the dp array and the final answer will be present at the last index position that is the bottom right which is at the intersection n and k which is the last column and the last row so return dp of n and k now let's try to run the code the test case are being accepted let's submit the code and a solution has been accepted so this approach is faster than the recursive approach but the overall time and space complexity is same as the recursive and memoization approach so that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video